Greetings, my friend. Greetings, namaste to you. I hope you are having a wonderful day this day. I hope you're finding many reasons to be grateful and joyous for life. If you are having trouble, you might start with the breath. Just feeling the breath as it moves in and moves out. Not with a lot of expectation, just observing. And after a while, perhaps you'll find some space there to once again come to a place of joy and relief if you had found anxiety or stress before. But anyways, thank you for joining me in this, this new series named Thank You Yoga. <clears throat> in this new series, Thank You Yoga, we will first adventure into Sursasana. Sursasana is headstand. So a little bit about me before we, we delve into this posture of yoga. My name is Aaron Suzurik. I'm a 200-hour yoga teacher. I teach at the Niles Gerard area yoga room in Ohio. I also teach chair yoga and yoga for rehabilitation or substance abuse. So, a little bit about why I find myself always intrigued and wanting to perform more advanced postures like sursasana because it gives me a chance to kind of liberate myself, go on a little adventure right here where I am at in Warren, Ohio. I don't have to do traveling in the physical space. I don't have to pay for tickets or gasoline. I can just go on an adventure right at my own house, provided I have the space necessary to perform the yoga posture. Fortunately, there is not a big space requirement, so hopefully you can find a safe spot to perform these postures if you would like to as well. So a little bit about this posture. It is an advanced to intermediate posture, I, I would say it, it maybe is a little more on the intermediate side, depending on what variation of the posture you take. So, that being said, it is good to, if you're a beginner, to build up to the posture, maybe doing some some things to strengthen the core muscles, the abdominal muscles, and the back before you begin to experiment with sursasana. So you might try both pose, uh, locust pose, or some back bending or folding. There's a lot of different postures you can do to strengthen these areas in your body before going into sursasana. So the reasons why I like sursasana so much, at least five of the reasons I was able to think about, was, well, I enjoy to do it in the morning. I find it a good substitute for a cup of coffee. I would think sursasana is a lot more healthier in the body. I know coffee doesn't taste that great to me. So coffee is not a good option for me. Um, and like most people, I do find myself uh, quite lethargic. <laughs> and I need to find a way to get going in the morning. So Sursasana can aid with that. Can wake me right up by turning my world kind of upside down. And asking me, inviting me to focus and to be at attention in order to maintain balance in the posture. And also, well, it does help drain the sinuses quite well and successfully, though in the morning you may find it's difficult to breathe out of the nose when you're trying to perform sursasana. 
because of all the drainage that is happening. But still I find it is worth it, quite worth it afterwards. And <clears throat> it helps me, once again I mentioned, feel that adventurous quality. It helps me find courage to do more difficult things in my life as well. And that's always an added bonus because my confidence has been not on the on the uh, positive side for a lot of my life. So yoga postures like this do help me bring my confidence to a positive rather than the, the half empty or negative feeling for courage and confidence in yourself, who you are and what you are about in your life. So this does also help me break tunnel vision um, sometimes we get stuck in a rut and negative thought cycles of I can't um, do start to occur sometimes in life. Like I mentioned with confidence and courage, um, the, this posture for me, it helps break me out of this tunnel vision um, and negative cycles that I might find myself in life by literally flipping my perspective, sometimes um, when you're making art, it is often said to step back from the painting or drawing that you're doing and try to see it in a larger perspective, not narrowing your gaze on a specific detail. Also, they, a teacher might recommend turning the portrait upside down so you can look at it from that new perspective and see if the overall picture is kind of meshing together, is working together harmoniously. You could think of Sursasana in much the same way. It can help us reset ourselves and look at things through fresh eyes and hopefully get ideas of how we might be more balanced and harmonious in our lives. So a little bit about a little bit about the benefits um, that a a very um, a very esteemed guru BKS Iyengar um, says will occur in your life with regular and precise practice of Sursasana. So healthy blood flow will be brought to the brain cells and it'll rejuvenate them so thinking is increased and thoughts become clear. This is a, a sauna is a tonic for people who tire quickly. It ensures proper blood supply to the pituitary and penile glands in the brain. Our growth, health, and vitality are dependent upon the proper functioning of these two glands. People who suffer from loss of sleep, memory, and vitality are recovered from regular and correct practice of this asana and have become fountains of energy. I love that image. Wouldn't you like to be a fountain of energy? Okay, and the lungs gain resilience from climbing and stand up to any work, which relieves ones from coughs and colds, tonsillitis, halitosis, or foul breath, and palpitations. It keeps the body warm. Coupled with Sarvangasana, or shoulder stand, it can be a boon to people suffering from constipation. And of course, it's very good to clean out the system in any way we can. Um, so, plus, regular practice of Sursasana marks an improvement in hemoglobin levels are red blood cells that bring oxygen to the vertebrates in the blood. 
regular and precise practice of this asana develops the body, disciplines the mind, and widens the horizon of the spirit. One becomes balanced and self-resilient, and pain and pleasure, loss and gain, shame and blame, and defeat and victory. So, there are so many good reasons, I would say, to perform this asana. Of course, everybody's experience is different, and it requires a lot of faith in the practice. You have to come back to the practice again and again to see these benefits begin to manifest themselves. It's a lot like building a, a house or a structure to live or work in. It takes time, it takes work, it takes resources, but over time, a house, a uh, structure can become a home where love is present and a family grows and flourishes and a building that is fairly, fairly dormant at first, there's not life in it, can become a thriving place of work and energy and vitality for the community in general um, once the resource, the practice, the work is put in to making that structure suitable for work, for people engaging in productive activity. is very much the same in our lives and in our bodies. In order to gain these benefits, we only have to practice and be sensitive to the specific needs of ourselves at any given moment. But practice does build towards a more positive direction in whatever shape or form it takes. It's just important to be careful. And with that, I would like to add the cautions before practicing Sursusana. So, if you do suffer from back injury, headaches, heart condition, high blood pressure, menstruation, neck injury, it is a good idea not to practice sursasana. And with low blood pressure, it is not good to practice sursasana unless it is later in your sequence. So don't start with sursasana if you have low blood pressure. Pregnancy, you could practice sursasana if you are experienced in this pose. Um, but if you are pregnant, don't start to practice sursasana. Oh, if you are pregnant, you can practice with experience, but um, it, it can only be up to a certain point in pregnancy. It can be laid into pregnancy, but it should be stopped at a point. I would uh, make sure I work with a teacher who is seasoned in the practice of this position, um, not just when in pregnancy, but in any time um, that you are learning about this posture and you might have doubts about how to practice this posture. Bring your individual questions and concerns to someone who does have experience in this pose. Because it is an intermediate to advanced pose, so that should always be kept in mind. So now, let's go ahead and practice Sursasana. And I'll go ahead and show you how to practice um, freestanding first, and then I will show you a variation for beginners that is done against the wall. So, for the pose of Sursasana, both for beginners and, um, let's say, people who are good with their balance that don't need a wall for support, we'll still start in much the same way. 
So coming on to all fours, we will, maybe you could start out by loosening the back a little bit with cat and cow. So moving the back from a sway position to an arch position. Maybe inhaling as you move up into the sway and then down into the arch. Exhale. And then when you are ready, we'll go ahead and begin to move deeper. Okay? So we'll come onto the elbows like so. We'll begin to gaze between the hands. And then eventually we will turn our head down so that the crown, top of the head area, is on the surface below. We will take our hands and kind of wrap them around the back of the head, clasping them together. And then when we are ready to do so, we'll start to experiment with our balance, pushing the bottom up, straightening the legs out, and bringing the feet closer um, to the torso and the upper body. And then when we want to begin to move into Sursasana, bringing the uh, toes onto their tips, and we might feel the bottom move back slightly towards the back of the head. And then when we are ready, we could even experiment first by lifting one leg up, lowering it, and lifting the other leg up, and lowering it. And then when we are ready, if we can maintain straight legs and then rise up using the core muscles and feeling the pelvis as it kind of shifts back and then forward and kind of in alignment with the torso. And then breathing in and out as we are able to do so. Like mentioned in the morning, it may be difficult to breathe in and out through the nose. So do the best you can with the breath. And it is recommended by BKS IM Guard that you spend five minutes in this posture. But of course, do whatever feels comfortable for you. And come down gradually and easily. Shifting the pelvis a little back and allowing the legs to kind of just fall down, trying to maintain them as straight as possible. Coming back to the knees and then coming back to that all fours position gradually and easily raising the head and then maybe taking a few circles with the head in either direction, maybe moving back and forth with the head and up and down, just to loosen the neck out again if it had become um, strained or stressed in that position. And then if this is uh, in the middle of your sequence or at the beginning, you can proceed to another posture, whatever one comes next. For you, or you may wish to rest, especially if you have built up a lot of heat. So you might move into child's pose, bringing toes together in the back, and relaxing onto the heels of the feet, bringing the head down to the surface below the forehead. Concentrating on the breath, or if you had built up quite a bit of heat and this would kind of um, kind of catch the breath in the area that would make you feel um, uncomfortable um, and maybe more heated. You could come to a seated posture, maybe like so. Maybe move the back into a nice straight position. Have the shoulders roll down the back. And just begin to concentrate on the breath, trying to relax and become harmonious within the breath first, and then moving to the thoughts. 
I could allow them to flow by as they would. Maybe bringing a count to the breath, inhaling one, two, three, four, exhaling one, two, three, four, and trying to regulate it in that way, bringing harmony to the breath and thereby the rest of the body and the mind. Very good, and for the variation up against the wall, I will demonstrate that now. When we move up against the wall, we want to be as close to the wall as we can so that we're not um, kind of allowing the back to kind of fall um, towards one way. Uh, are towards like our back. We we want a nice and straight back as much as possible. That's why it's important to try to get as close to the wall as we can. Um, but of course that comes with time and practice. So I recommend not being any further back than the hands width. Um, so I will go ahead and come to the wall now, coming about hands width away from the wall, and then lowering once again onto my head, bringing hands behind my head once again, moving the feet closer to my head, moving on to the tiptoes, and moving the bottom back, and the legs come up as before. <clears throat> And just allowing the breath to flow as it were, trying to breathe in and out of the nose. And when we are ready to do so, gradually shifting our weight a little bit back allowing the legs to start to fall with control forward. Toes touch the mat. Knees come back to the surface. Either moving, maybe releasing the neck in those movements described before. And then moving into child's pose. or perhaps into that seated position. With a nice straight spine, easy breath in, easy breath out. Maybe taking some time to think our bodies for carrying us through the practice, the ground for supporting us, and the vital breath for making it possible for us to work in harmony between the mind and the body. To connect the mind and the body to the spirit and to work in harmony with all that is, all living beings, all creation. We learn those lessons in these simple, simple practices with the body. By simple, I don't mean that Susasana is not a more advanced to intermediate pose. I just mean that there is not a lot that is required other than our presence, our willingness, our faith in the practice. We don't need to purchase a ticket, or have a vehicle, supply it with fuel and gas. This is a little adventure for ourselves right here wherever we are at. Thank you. Thank you, my friend, once again for being with me here today, for practicing with me. 
I do hope you enjoyed this first entry of Thank You Yoga. Thank you, Yoga, for Sursasana. You bring so much goodness into our lives and practice safely with regularity. Easy breath in, easy breath out. Hadi Om Tatsa. All is one, one is all. God bless you. May love and joy and peace always be at your side, my friend. Have a wonderful day.